What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Jay Main back checking in with the people. And um, I've been thinking. Yeah, I've been thinking. Do y'all think 2018 will be PS4's best year? And I know that statement sounds crazy right now in the middle of 2017 when this year so far has been absolute fire. I mean, we've got Neo, Gravity Rush 2, Horizon Zero Dawn, Persona 5. We still got Uncharted Lost Legacy, the Crash Bandicoot Trilogy. I mean, this year, just off the top of my head, has been one of the best years in gaming in general. I was just naming kind of exclusives. Like, we ain't even getting to, like, all the third-party heat that's dropped this year. You know what I'm saying? So, 2017 has been crazy. But I think there's a couple things going on in 2018 that could lead to it being not only its best year for games but it's best year sales wise because i personally don't think the ps4 has hit its peak on a year-to-year -year basis when it comes to sales here's why i'll start with the price playstation 4 right now is retailing at 299 now a lot of uh places are selling it for 249 you can get it i'm sure during the holiday season it'll be down to 249 some places might even go as far as 199 but once that's over, it's probably going to go back up or even stay at 249 It might go back up to 299 I think in 2018, we will finally see the PS4 MSRP retail price as 199 Now, I always felt that 199 is that sweet spot in a generation where anybody who's any everybody is buying a playstation 4 i mean if you already have one you're probably buying another one for another room in your house like that's what 199 does i mean if you don't have one 199 is a no-brainer especially with the catalog to me personally it's a no-brainer now at 249 or 299 but 199 of course is more appealing so with the catalog it has at 199 already is going to be off the chain now Moving on to the games, for me personally, PlayStation 4 has some, some games I've been looking forward to for a very long time. Now, I'm going to start with Spider-Man because I'm a huge Spider-Man fan, my favorite superhero, and I love the Spider-Man games. But when I found out that a new one was coming out, off the bit, off the rip, I was hyped because, like I said, I'm just a big Spider-Man fan. But then I found out that Insomniac Games was making this new Spider-Man. And that right there, I mean, I love Insomniac games from everything they've done with Ratchet and Clank. Even Sunset Overdrive, an Xbox One exclusive that if you have an Xbox One and you haven't played it, you need to play it. It's one of my favorite Xbox One games. That game is lit. But they're doing it. And to me, they nail gameplay. Um, all their games are fun to play. They are good with uh, making things feel... I don't know, I say like not too serious, you know what I'm saying? They don't take their stuff serious. And to me, Spider-Man is that kind of character. While he can get serious, a lot of times he has this little quips and he's joking around with people and, you know, he's kind of up and down. But I think Insomniac can nail that because they know how to get serious and they're very good at, you know, characters that are joking around with, you know, the situations that they're in. Um, we saw gameplay, the game looks beautiful, and Spider-Man is a household name, so... Being that it's going to be only on PlayStation 4, um, which I believe it's going to be like the only Spider-Man game that was exclusive on PlayStation ever. Um, that right there alone is probably going to get people to buy a PlayStation 4 just to play Spider-Man. And I'm going back to what I said about 199. Anybody who's everybody is buying a PlayStation 4 at 199, and Spider-Man is going to be a very big title um, that's going to get people jumping on board. Next game for me is God of War. Um, I love God of War. I've beaten every God of War game. God of War was like one of the games that I kind of played it by accident. I remember back when I was younger and God of War 1 first came out. I wasn't really big on like looking up game reviews and stuff like that. If I did, I probably would have saw that it was highly rated. But it was a new IP at the time. So when I went to the game store, I'm like, you know, like what's new that came out? And they were telling me about God of War. I'm looking at the case and all this other stuff. I'm like, all right, this game looks pretty dope. Um, I'm going to pick it up. And that was that was back when if you were under 18, they sold you rated M games. It was crazy, but 
I remember when that rule changed, but I already was like cool with everybody that worked at the game store, so they just let me slide. But I remember a point where I was going into GameStop buying rated them games as like a 12 year old. Uh, now it's all crazy. You need ID, parent signature, permission slips, stuff like that. Um, God of War, it looks amazing. What can I say? The graphics are beautiful. The, the, uh, the camera angle is different, but I think it's a fresh change. And I think that's something that the series needed if they were going to continue it. And, you know, that's supposed to be coming out the first half of the year. Um, another game was Detroit Become Human. Now, these uh, Quantic Dream games don't really sell big. But I think they are great games for people to watch that are going to be streaming. This is kind of going to have that until dawn effect where you might get people on board just from them watching you stream the game. Um, until dawn was, you know, it rated pretty well. I'm assuming it sold well. It's actually free on PlayStation Plus this month. Go check that out. That game is pretty good. Um, but it's something that's going to have uh, people talking. That conversation is going to get going. And, you know, of course, the conversation is going to bring attention to the system and people might want to pick up a PlayStation just to play Detroit Become Human if they're interested in that story. Um, like I said, Quantic Dream Games, uh, Heavy Rain, Beyond Two Souls. I love those two games. A lot of people didn't like Beyond Two Souls, but I'm a big fan of Beyond Two Souls. And Detroit Become Human looks like it's on the, up that same alley where you have the choices. Um, and I, some people have been hating on... Um, Detroit become human, but I see them play every Telltale game. So I'm just questioning, like, I know Telltale games, some of them stories are amazing, like The Walking Dead, but come on, Detroit don't look bad at all. It visually looks way better than anything Telltale has coming out. And, you know, I think the track record from Chronic Dream kind of speaks for itself when it comes to delivering a pretty dope story. So I'm excited for that. I think that's going to be great in this catalog coming up in 2018. And then last but not least is Days Gone. Uh, Days Gone, a zombie game, open world. Uh, some instances that favors The Last of Us. But I think it's going to do enough stuff different, hopefully, to separate itself. They, I still think they need to show us more different. Like, I think that bear at the end of the last trailer that came out, I thought that was something different. Like, seeing big large animals that are morphed into like freakers is what they're called them or zombies or whatever like having battles with that those kind of things are to me what's different um i think they showed a pretty good demo to show off how great the game looks visually uh all the stealth options that you have so that 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 looks pretty good it might not be the biggest title of the four that i'm naming maybe third but it's still something that I think people will gravitate towards just from the, you know, the the undead aspect of it alone. So you got those four games, and those are just four games that we know of right now. You can't forget all the JRPGs that are probably going to be sprinkled in there. Platformers, third-party games, stuff like that. All that stuff combined with 199. I think this is the year, 2018, when we will see PlayStation 4 hit its peak sales-wise and possibly games wise so it'll be interesting but i want to know down in the comment section what y'all think do y'all think 2018 is going to be its peak year or do y'all think this year was the peak year for the playstation 4 don't forget to rate the video subscribe to the channel if you're new here and i'll catch y'all in my next video peace